Cuckoo! It's the cannon that's officially our uh, uh, catchphrase for the vi- what, it did f***ing- no, cut this. Intro. Hi, welcome to video time. I'm video and you're video. Maybe all together we could be video. And that's- now that's what I call video. Uh, I did a poll. I did a poll amongst my chat. And in said poll, we highlighted a number of themes and possibilities and things we could look at for a video. The thing that won astoundingly well, that crushed, that took a huge dub, and anybody that didn't vote for it will be left behind in the annals of history and uh, uh, burned. What the people want is, you know, frankly, also kind of the thing that I want, to be honest with you, is conservative TikTok comedy. All done. Okay. Oopsie daisy. That felt like having a social event cancelled. I was getting all ready to go out. I was getting ready to chuckle. I was specifically told that the, the, these would be funny. Let me just check how stacked my medication cabinet is because of my consistently crumbling and unsustainable mental health. It's extremely stacked. I might have lost it, I guess. Oh, that's never a good sign. <sighs> Common sense as a term was nicked, wasn't it? It was stolen before it was even useful. The moment that all the conservatives le leapt in there and were like, well, actually, the thing that we say feels intuitive and straightforward. It, it, it's common sense. Yeah, of course your perspective feels like common sense because your entire po your entire life and political ideology is based on convenience and comfort and bias. Yeah, your bias is gonna feel like common sense. People that are biased and have horrible takes don't think that they're biased. That's actually kind of the entire point. They're just supposed to be wrong. <laughs> you know what critical thinking is? Critical thinking is the experience of feeling something and then processing it through axiomatic data and evidence and logic. You all claim to love logic and science and the marketplace of ideas and yet common sense. Ooh, that's the key word. I just feel the thing. That's what common sense is. It's your feeling over the facts. Eat my little brown toes. Man, do I smell good and actually a lot better than you, viewer. Hi, welcome to a little extra bit in the middle of the video, but this is important and I'll tell you for why. Because today's video, this one that you're watching right now, is sponsored by Scentbird, a personal favorite. Well, what is Scentbird? Ah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know anything. That's you, I'm being you. Well, I'll tell you right now. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service with over 600 brand fragrances to choose from. You can choose a new fragrance every month and never repeat any if you don't fancy doing that. All for just $17 a month. It's also a completely flexible service with no obligation, so you can skip a month anytime you fancy in case you haven't been uh, using the banger product enough. Maybe you've been accidentally stinking up the joint. Each fragrance comes with a 30-day supply, so you can use it as liberally as you fancy, smell great every single day of the month, and give it a full test drive if you want to, make sure it's right for you. And you'll know that it is right for you because on the Scentbird website is a quiz to help guide you on what the most appropriate fragrance is for you. All you have to do is answer a handful of very basic questions and they will recommend scents that are best for your lifestyle, aesthetic, all the features. Uh, and it worked perfectly for me. Here are a few of the ones that I got recommended by the quiz and I'm getting, it, gang, I'm getting compliments left and right. Both sides of the political spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hugely wide selection of fragrances available. Everything from high brand, high fashion types like your Gucci's and your Prada's, or maybe you'll get some more indie fragrances like Skylar or Heretic. Whatever your style is, there are so many options that you could be running through this catalog forever. The vials are eight times bigger than your average like little sample bottle and they are the perfect size for keeping on the go. Look how sly this is, look how cool this is. Fits in your, I could fit it in my, in my hoodie. I could fit it in my, you could put it in your damn mouth. Don't though. Of the selections I got, I'll tell you, uh, this bad boy right here, Kinetic. Hello. Not just a cool name. That's my day-to-day -day lifestyle choice. This one in particular has a uh, kind of top notes of mandarin-y citrusiness, some, uh, some, some woodiness, some cedar wood. Sign Your Attitude by Mercedes Benz, which has been a date night classic for me with its top notes of amber wood, setalox, ginger, lavender, and nutmeg. And last but not least, we have Hoss number one. I don't know, wait, what are the, I'm actually, I'm done no, testing myself. A cinnamony, I know it's cinnamony. A vanilla and cinnamony, cinnamon. Vanilla, and then amber tonk 
Tonka and Clove. I'd still, I, well, I mean, they smell good, but I'm not gonna get Anchor, Tonka and Clove. That one in particular, I watered the Streamies quite recently. People said, people said very nice things about it. I did not win an award for it. So if you yourself would like to become a scent birder, a scent birdist, well, to become somebody that uh, smells really, really good and gets nice compliments about it, and you'd like to do it at a reduced price, which it would be very strange if you didn't, then make sure to click the link below, both in the description and the pinned comment. Oh, and here, look, look, look at it. I'm moving it around. <laughs> That must be frustrating to edit. And you use my promo code Jordan55. Then you will get 55% off your first month. That is, that's about $8. You're paying about $8 for the damn thing. That seems borderline unreasonable. An even more unreasonable thing would be if they were available in Canada now. Guess what? They super duper are. So if you want to grab a fragrance for yourself or maybe a special someone over the, the holiday season, yeah, you can get it super duper cheap. Thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video and by grabbing my order audience and saying, no, time to smell good. Love you unconditionally. Look, it's the video you were watching. Trans people are statistically more likely to unalive themselves. So should we be cautious about promoting this ideology to children? No, how dare you say that? How dare you even suggest that? I feel kind of silly because really <laughs> to even be disappointed, it's, it's like getting mad at your dog for wagging their tail, right? It's just... I'm a drunk driver. I got on the road. It's my fault that I crashed. I should never have gotten on the road of watching this video. What is it that conservatives think the transite ideology, the trans agenda is for? What's the purpose of it? It's a completely unmotivated, irrational goal that the left has just arbitrarily decided that they want to support for, for no fucking reason at all. It doesn't make any sense. Of course, this is your response because again, the foundation of bias is comfort. People don't want to be uncomfortable. People don't want to have to adapt. So the most comfortable and com common sense reaction is to go immediately to what you like, which is not having to engage with a difficult idea. I love not engaging with difficult ideas. It's just that I, I am more willing to engage with something that goes against my instincts and work on myself over a series of years to understand why to sympathize, if not empathize, but sympathize with people who have a, um, a confrontational relationship with their gender and sex identity and expression. I'm more willing to give trans people some sympathy and whatever empathy I can than I am to just kind of throw my hands up in the air and accept a higher rate of ending yourself in Minecraft or whatever it is that we have to say now. I don't know, I guess I guess I hate common sense. Is this funny or am I pissed off? Welcome to Jordan Adika Knights, the bad boy one. These are like the frames you get to go see a 3D movie. The ones that like don't bend at the hinge and that you have to return and then they, um, uh, I, I think they just feed them to James Cameron. Oh my goodness. we have found a treasure trove. No, we're still in the pandemic technically, but are we not done with vaccine comedy? It's just bizarre. It would be almost as out of touch as referencing the Simpsons, oh my God. Why is my man dressed like Chippendale? What's happening? Trans children are trans because the idea was promoted to If this were true, then there would be no such thing as a detransitioner. From trans to detransitioner, what we can learn from this growing trend. And look, I'm sure many people are gonna say that's fake, that's misinformation. Hold on, my man's G-dub. Greg Wycliffe, the whitest name I've ever seen in my entire life. You were introducing us to what I'm sure was a very reputable source. Do you want to read the articles? From trans to detransitioner, what we can learn from this growing trend. What is it? What would that be? Are you asking me? Is your question, what can, I, what can we learn from this trend that you made up? Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, what we could probably learn is that any piece of data is appealing to those afraid of change uh, and unable to engage with studies or data that's, you know, productive, accurate, has a point to make. Did you get your vaccine? Well, it's never too late to get your vaccine. Now, come here now. Come here. Come here now. Stand still. <laughs> it's weird every time. I feel like I'm, I'm blacking out for a second. Let's, let's, what's the... Joke of it. You're a racist dumb dumb man. You should get injection. Injection vaccine, good for you. Makes you not look racist, helps you keep your job. You should get injection. Injection vaccine, good for you. Makes you not look racist, helps you keep your job. Yes? Screw that self-esteem yes. and emotional well-being. You're a racist dumb dumb man. 
You should get in Yeah, no trans kids don't anymore. Vaccine, not allowed. And don't get the vaccine, just die. You not look racist. Greg, it, 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 is, it is something when I say this. I need you to understand how the gravity that the statement I'm about to make comes with. I make better content than you. Me! Me! I was just, I just spent a good portion of an hour moving around a very poorly chroma keyed image of Isabel from Animal Crossing that my chat has now renamed fucking Chona Bell for an hour for, for a job. For work, I did that, Greg. And I make better stuff than you. Significantly better stuff than you. I will look at the dumbest shit, have a good old laugh, and and I've made a career of it. And yet you make what you think is incisive comedy, where the statement, I guess in this case, Greg, let me just uh, make sure I got the point. You're a racist dumb dumb man. Oh, was doctor talk like caveman? And I'm going to phrase this reductively. Me, Mr. Lawman, don't drive car after drinking much alcohols and don't drive through gate of school and crush class of seventh graders. Dum dum dum. I'm speaking in sentence fragments. So the point, I guess, is not valid. Uh, I'm almost done with my mans. Add it again with my white mans. Oh, there's so many choices. I'd love to see his third interpretation of the same bit. What's inside of it? Well, what's inside of it is baby fetus matter and mRNA, synthetic mRNA. We've never really tried this before, uh, so we don't really know how well uh, or not well. Hmm. That's interesting, Greg. 1960s? Let me just check the cal real quick. Let me just, uh, hi, um, me dum dum calendar man. What day be it on Google Calendar? Something, something. This bit works about as well as yours does. Yeah, my guy, it's not the 1960s, is it? It's certainly not the early 1960s, in fact. Sorry, but we've never tried it. <laughs> I mean, we've never tried it on the person they're doing it with in this sketch, I guess. But that's like a, a little like somebody having like iceberg lettuce for the first time. Being like, look, we've never tried eating it before. You, I mean, you specifically have never tried eating it before. Yeah, I guess in any case, I, I get, at any point, hey man, when I drop this lens cap, it falls down. Now there is always a chance that it will just float straight up to the ceiling. It's always possible, isn't it, Greg? Doesn't happen, never has, uh, for any reason at all. Uh -oh. Talking about the COVID vaccine booster? I don't think the COVID vaccine <laughs> COVID vaccine booster is not really supposed to do anything about the flu, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that might be it for me. I don't know if I have the juice as much as I loved Greg and his very good points. I'm gonna have to take a step away. Maybe another day we will return for actual comedy. No, sorry, I don't mean to imply that obviously he wasn't like very, very funny. I think the joke that I enjoyed the most was probably his bit about how the um Short, uh, not the strongest memory. Um, the sometimes doctors. Now, audience, I love you unconditionally. I would kill for you, and I want to uh, say, Greg, for the beautiful time we've had together. I have to get back to making my far more valuable content. And as a reminder, my valuable content that's better than yours is this. <laughs> it's it's my chat creating a, a Twitter account for a fictional character that we created moments ago that was based entirely on a, a very poorly chroma key dancing version of Isabel from Animal Crossing. Get it, get it right away, in it, in it, earn my way. You won't, you won't pay my rent, like why the hell would I listen to you? Too many goals, too many dreams, not enough fiction. And it's just saying, future's paved, mind in my business. Clicking my hands to look at my poses, feel like I'm